What's up guys? It's Professor OWA and I've got two of my best students here, Chuck and Larry, and then we're here to talk about school. Okay, enough with the, with the school puns, we're going to put them back. Guys, today we're talking about targeting schooling bass, what I like to use, rod, reel, line, all that good stuff. So we're going to jump into it and uh, show you guys how I go about targeting schooling bass. Now don't worry, with me being back here in the shop does not mean that you're not going to see fishing. I'm going to show you guys some fishing videos, okay, because I did, I did go out, obviously caught a couple, and I want to show you guys exactly how I like target topwater schooling bass. This is probably the most frustrating yet fun way to target schooling bass, and I absolutely love it. However, it is, like I said, frustrating. This is a very high stakes game, but the payout comes in the form of blow ups and payout can be pretty freaking big. So the best way that I have found to target schooling bass is there's really no rhyme or reason except for the fact of, I know I can go out there, I can buzz around with the trolling motor or idle on the motor, stir the bait up, and then what I will do is I will literally just stop and sit. I will not touch the trolling motor. I'll try and put myself in a centralized location from where I kind of circled around, somewhat corralled bait, if you will, and just sit and wait. Now, the thing with schooling bass is a lot of time we'll see that single ring. We'll see that single ripple out on the water and think they're going to school there and make a cast out there, and you may blow it because they're actually going to school over here. So it's a patience game. Like I said, it's very frustrating. It can take a lot of time and a lot of chasing around trying to figure it out but getting those blow ups on top water open water especially when they're schooling i just i absolutely love it i mean they may not always be the biggest but they're freaking fun so how i like to target these guys the kind of baits i like to use i like to use a walking style bait or a popper whether that be a spook as a walking style bait or something like a pencil which i have never used a pencil bait until now. It came in the August box. It is called the ARC TB115, the top water blower, 115 millimeter pencil bait right there. You can see this guy's already got a whole lot of teeth marks on the top right there. This thing has been absolutely sick. Now again, I've never used a pencil bait until now and I'm a freaking believer. This thing, pencil baits, I, I've got to get more of them. But this has made me a believer in them because the walk on these is, at least the walk on this thing, is unreal. I mean, it is probably the easiest walking bait I have ever used. Gives off a great little spit, a little pop. The walk is tight. I love everything about it. But I like to use a walking style bait or something like a popper as well. Now, big question. Does color matter? I mean, that's kind of like always the debate. Does color really matter? I don't think so. I don't think color necessarily matters as much when they're schooling. It's all about the action of the bait. As soon as that bait hits the water, you want to get that thing working. You need to cause an erratic motion. You need to just show off and cause some kind of disturbance to where you're giving those fish something to target in on, something to see. They see bait struggling at the surface. They want to hit that. So again, when you are seeing those fish start to school up, fire that bait out there and immediately work that thing as soon as it hits the water because that is what is going to trigger that reaction. They're in that feeding frenzy. They're not gonna be sitting there wondering, is that real or not? They're gonna see something struggling on the surface and they're gonna to wanna to get that because they want to get as much food as possible in that short amount of time that they have. So, same thing for us. That short amount of time as we have, get that bait out there, get that thing working, get the fish back. The kind of equipment that I like to use. On all my top water, I've got braid. Now, monofilament is another great one. Monofilament is great, especially if you're throwing a spook, popper, pencil, anything with treble hooks. The more stretch and the more give you can get when they hit that, the better. On the other hand though, you don't want too much. I don't like a moderate, or a moderate action rod. I'm using a 7.2 to a 7.6 heavy power rod. Now, why heavy power, why fast action? 
for me is what I'm comfortable with. A moderate fast is good. Fast with monofilament is gonna be great because you're gonna have stretch in the line, but you're gonna have enough backbone and enough snap in the rod. Now, a moderate fast on braid is probably gonna do you better. It would probably do me better, but this is what I'm comfortable with and this is what I use. But I use braid with a heavy fast. More so on walking baits, I like to use the longer rod. The longer rod you're gonna get a little more tip out of, you're gonna get a little bit more load out of as well. So with those smaller treble hooks, it's going to stick that fish better. But again, get enough backbone to bury those hooks in. Does real speed matter? Not necessarily. I use a seven gear and I use an eight gear. I like my eight gear. And the reason I like the eight gear is if there is a ton of schooling activity and I miss a school, I wanna get that bait back as fast as possible and fire it right back out. That eight gear reel is gonna get that bait back to me faster than the seven gear reel, obviously. So that's what I personally prefer, but you can't go wrong with seven gear to an eight gear for topwater fishing, in my opinion. A six gear, a little too slow. A little too slow for me, not what I like. Now I feel like I've done enough talking, so let's just go ahead and show off a couple of catches on some topwater schooling activity. Oh my gracious. Holy moly, that guy smashed it. Oh, oh man. Where are you? <laughs> hey, that's a good one too. Barely hooked. That's a good schoolie right there. Heck yeah. Him, I don't know. Nope. You got it. Yeah. You got it. He did kind of foul hook him. Right on the outside though. That's it. Outside of his mouth. Well, top of his mouth. And then his cheek. And it's gill. My golly! Holy cow! freaking t-boned that so guys i say again schoolers they're not always the biggest but they are a ton of fun it is so much fun to just go out there and see them just come up out of nowhere and go into a full feeding frenzy and be able to get your bait out there and have them absolutely crush that thing t-bone it just drag it down under. I, mean, I absolutely love it. I love everything about it. I really don't care that they're not the biggest fish possible. I just love topwater fishing and I love targeting these schoolies because they are so mean and so aggressive and so much energy that I just I can't get away from. It. So guys, I hope you like this video. If you're not subscribed to the Monster Bass channel, do so. If you're not subscribed to my channel, there is going to be a link down in the description. Hop over to my channel, give me a sub, drop a comment, let me know that you came over from Monster Bass. I would appreciate it. Guys, it's not too late. You can still get this August bag, and you can get your own TB-115 from ARC. I'm telling you, if you haven't used a pencil bait just yet, you've got to try it out.